Yeah, they would be very happy to leave right now, 28 to 10. And you look how West Virginia has scored. A block punt for a touchdown. That's an easy score. That's a gift. Second one, the big run by Zeraway. 51 yards. You take those two plays away, you've got a 14 to 10 game. And we might have a, a little bit of uh, tenthness in the stands of all these 70,000 people here. Another plus for the Marshall University. That last drive, they had a lot of third and long situations, and Pennington stood tough and delivered. The kickoff bounces to Keaton, looking for some room at the 20, 25, cuts it back outside, gets a block. Swarmed under, close to midfield. An excellent return that time by Keaton. Look how he was so patient. He waited for his spots and just kind of weaved his way upfield. First and ten. Foreman in motion. It's Keaton to midfield. He'll pick up about three. In West Virginia, I'm sure, in the last three minutes here would be content to pound it out on the ground if they can. Eat up some clock. Nine plays, 52 yards for the Thundering Herd. The touchdown pass of 24 yards to Kolkaw gets the first touchdown of the 1997 season for the defending Division I AA National Champions. But their head coach comes out of an assistance job at Florida. Bob Pruitt, all he does is go 15-0 and 0 in his very first season as a head coach. He does something that no coach on any Division 1AA, Division 1A, has ever done. Come out his first year and run the table. He's also been an assistant at Tulane, Mississippi, Wake Forest. He was the defensive coordinator for Florida and a graduate of Marshall. Where he played halfback, was drafted by the Cowboys, and then wound up playing some semi-pro football. Second down and seven from midfield. Play action pass is caught for just about a 10-yard gain. Foreman made the catch in the arms of B.J. Summers. A lot of credit has to go out to this offensive line for West Virginia, doing a great job blocking for Zeraway. They're also doing a number, keeping the pocket, Nice and open for Bolger. He drops back. Nobody's in his face. We talked about that quick release. Also spoke of Sean uh, Foreman having to step up with Saunders being out for the year, and he has done that. They get eight yards and the first down. It's first and ten from the 42-yard line, and Bolger looking very efficient in the first half. Play action fake. Sets. Waits and goes down. Back at the 47, 48-yard line. He is wrestled under. So the SE made the tackle, number 85 coming in to get him. Talked to some of the coaches yesterday, and they're not sururprised about this guy. Six foot seven, 244 pound true freshman. We're in the first half. Keaton hit immediately as he moved through by BJ Cohen. Cohen got some help from Andre O'Neill, but Cohen is the man. Even though they're down 28-10, this Marshall team is playing hard. If you're Bob Pruitt, that's exactly what you want from your football team. Staying in the game. B.J. Cohen with a little trick we used to call a T.E., tackle end exchange. Bring in a couple of extra wideouts now. Green is in there for the first time this afternoon. One wideout left, two wideouts, two, one, one to the right and two to the left in this formation. Out of the shotgun. Bulger sets, throws, it's deflected and incomplete. It was intended over there for Green. Well, Tovesi got a piece of it, I think. With 44 seconds left, Marshall will get one more chance. Awaiting the kick is Moss. This is another good one. Moss signals fair catch and takes it at the 13. First down 10 for Marshall with 32 seconds remaining. Moscow's wide left. Gerald Long is wide right. And they're going to kneel down, as we said. They'll be happy to get back in this football game, trailing by 18 at halftime. And Bob Pruitt and company can go in that locker room and regroup. 
They had a couple of good drives during the course of the half. The last one very impressive because of those third and long situations. Converted two third and longs, kept the drive alive. Pennington, every bit as poised as Bulger. Both of these coaches have to be very happy with the player, the quarterbacks. And I'm sure when Bob Pruitt goes in there, he was concerned about how his defense would hold up against West Virginia's offensive line. Better as the half went on. Don Nealon will head to his locker room with the halftime lead. West Virginia is in front of Marshall in their first meeting since 1923. It's 28 to 10. We will begin our halftime activities after this. This is underway from Morgantown. We're at Mountaineer Field. Eaton drops it, picks it up at the two. Runs away from a couple of tacklers and still on his feet. Fights his way out across the 15. And that was a pretty good job just to get to there. First and 10 for West Virginia. The ball is 16 yard line of the Mountaineer. We talked about it earlier, receiving punts. How about a kickoff from a sidewinder? Has a little curve on it. Keaton has a problem handling it. The only thing I know to be true, John, is when you're running east and west, you're not gaining yards. He did get it out to the 16-yard line, and that's where the Mountaineers will put it in play as we begin the second half. 28 to 10, West Virginia. Quick pass. It's dropped by Foreman right at the 20-yard line. So instead of going to the running game, Bolger dropped back quickly, tried to put it in the hands of Sean Foreman. A little bit of difference in the protection both of those were receiving, though. Zaraway stops and down he goes near the 15-yard line. No hole that time. O'Neill was there. Out of the shotgun now. They have taken Zaraway out of there. White is the lone running back. He's in there to block and now maybe come out on a pass play. Pass is complete near the 25-yard line. Oswega made the catch right at the 25. I think he's going to be a little short. Larry Moore was there defensively for the Thundering Herd, and so it's three and out for the Mountaineers. www.randymoss.com. That's how you can get in contact with him. Almonds kick. Fielded at the door. Dropped at the 25. He retreats to pick it up. Now he's trying to dig himself out of a hole, and will. Plenty of room down that left sideline. Stop and go move at the 45. Inside the 40, inside the 35, and down he goes. Chris Edmonds finally tracked him down. And maybe that bobble helped him a little bit. First down at the 33, following a 42-yard punt return of a 50-yard kick. Pennington looks, it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. He's second and 10. There's the quick pass at the 30 to 25. Cole Claw dancing down the sidelines. He's banged out of bounds. They're going to spot it near the 15-yard line. Gary Tompkins came up to make the hit, but they flooded that zone, made good yardage, and get the first down. And Tompkins is lucky he wasn't flagged. The two things they do, they try and protect the quarterback as much as they can, and they also do not like people getting hit near the sideline. Call Cloak. Close to the sideline. Tompkins is coming up out of the secondary. You tell me, is he out of bounds? Very close. Is that Cole Claw who is down? It yeah, is. That is Cole Claw that's down. Maybe it's a cramp, though. It looks... We'll take a break with 13-13 remaining third quarter. Marshall trying to get back in the game. Trailing by 18. The Mountaineers have the lead. Well, they are jumping for joy on the Marshall side of the field because their man, Randy Moss, is pulling them back in this football game. First, it was the kickoff return, and then from the 15-yard line, he went airborne. Pennington found him, and it's six for the herd. You talk about a quick strike offense. They scored before we came back. Nate Terry is all over him. That's one of the advantages of having a wide receiver that's six foot five. Now it's 28 to 17. And exactly what Jeff Bostick talked about at halftime has happened. Bob Pruitt's club is back in at 1308 remaining in the third, 28-17, West Virginia. Marshall has scored the last 14 points, and Moss gets his first touchdown catch of 1997. You take a look from the end zone. The good news is he scored the touchdown, John, but if he wants to duplicate 1996, he's got to score 28 more. 
short kickoff fielded downfield by one of the up men at the 22-yard line, and that's where West Virginia now will go back to work. The Thundering Herd is back in the football game. Ryan Brady received the kick. He spotted at the 22, first and 10, and it was three and out. That's so, one of the disadvantages, John, of going up big early in the game. Some of that emotion and some of that adrenaline that you had going in, it, it turns off. And once you lose it, it's hard to turn it back on. Well, let's see if Bouldrick can get the Mountaineers going now. Zaraway trying to get outside. He'll squeeze ahead for a couple of yards, no more. You can see the defense, Ricky Hall, a former fullback, makes the tackle. They moved him over to the defensive line. Play fake from Bolger. Now runs away from pressure. He's going to keep it and go out of bounds as he gets across the 25 to the 27-yard line. It'll be third and five. Smart play by Larry Moore, the cornerback for the Marshall defense. Bolger's running out of bounds. He had a chance to hit him. Chose not to. Probably prevented his team from getting a penalty. Bolger getting the instructions from the sidelines. This is a big third down for this West Virginia offense. They have struggled the last three times they've been on the field. David Richardson is in that lineup now, and the Marshall players trying to get their fans into it on third down and five. Richardson is the motion man. The pass is caught across the 35. Richardson drops the football. Was he down before? Yes, he was down. I think it's going to be short of a first down, though, depending on the spot. They needed to get close to the 33, and I think they only got to the 32. It'll be fourth down. Just from the, the, the top of this stadium here at Mountaineer Stadium, this looked like a fumble to me. We'll see from this replay. Good job of stripping the ball. No knee down yet, and that ball's out. It's a little bit congested in there, huh? Well, that last look, it did appear that he was down, and they are going to kick it away. That means more work for Randy Moss and Brian Bauman now, standing back inside his own 20. This one angled toward the sideline, fielded back at the 16, spinning his way across the 20 to the 22 is Randy Moss. Coming right into your living room, is this a fumble? I think the ball is out before his knee hits the ground. West Virginia fortunate. Marshall was on the ball. The officials may have blown that one. 22-yard line, first down 10. Moss is split to the near side. Going with the lone setback. It's been Doug Chapman most of the day, and he will stumble as he gets to the line of scrimmage and goes down. And once again, you see... Stills was one of the first one to the hole. Randy Moss, of course, was only the player of the year in basketball in the state of West Virginia twice. In his senior year, he was both player of the year in football and basketball. You know more about him. He's an excellent runner. Well, when you get a uh, comment, he was the best high school football player I've ever seen from Lou Holtz. As good as Deion Sanders, Deion is a measuring stick. This kid's just as just as big or bigger than Deion. Uh, that's from Bobby Bowden. Uh, those are some uh, very high. We have a timeout with 11:21 to go, third quarter. It's now a 28-17 lead for West Virginia over the Thundering Herd. 28-17 is the score. It is second down and 10 for the Thundering Herd back at about the 21-yard line. Still plenty of time left in this football game. 11-21 to go. And during that timeout, the West Virginia players trying to get their fans back in the ball game. And I think part of uh, getting them out of the game was that early big lead that they had, 28-3. But now it's 28-17. There is the quick pass. Moss is dumped at the 24. Hadley made the play over there defensively. Moss gets a couple. 